So to start off this video, I'm making another bending jig, and that is to hold almost decorative elements on the legs that will hold up a circular hoop, which your feet can go on. So I started by laminating together a bunch of sheets of quarter inch Luon, and quarter inch Luon is more like 3 16 of an inch, not a quarter of an inch. So I think this was five sheets because I wanted to make these three quarters of an inch thick. So in order to get the original shape um, that I'm going to be bending after I glued together that laminate was I made a pattern off the leg. So in the original drawing, the, the, um, it's almost like an S curve kind of comes up, curves a little bit, and then flattens out and it's flattened and screwed into the top, whereas in the bottom it'll actually be mortised in place. So I kind of just made a rough curve that matched the drawing. It didn't have to be exact necessarily. And then um, I put some Sharpie on it just so everything's easier to see because I was erasing lines and, and redrawing the lines a little bit. And then I just thickened that original mark to three quarters of an inch because this material um, that's going in the legs is gonna be about three quarters square drew another line and then I could cut the shape out. So I tested it against all my legs because um, I wanted to make sure it would fit properly against the longer and the shorter legs I have. And that is kind of the reason why it's always important to, um, with this it was a little bit unavoidable because of, like I said, I, cur I steam bent that one piece with the knot in it. But if you have a little bit of an undulation in the piece, it's something you're going to have to work with throughout the entire build but this ended up not being a big issue you could see it fits nicely on both pieces i tested it on there after after i cut it out and then i could transfer it to my laminated slab so for this i only cut down the middle um, i always kind of wonder if, if this is something where you should be cutting out the shape so that when you squeeze clamp it together it forms around the shape and um, I just cut one, one straight line, which you'll see, and that ended up working for me. So I guess you could play around with, with cutting out the entire form, but like I said, for this build, I really only needed it to work for a couple bends, and then I probably won't be ever making a chair like this again. So I didn't want to spend a ton of time on the jigs. So before I cut out this mark with my jigsaw, I drew some um, centering lines just so I could realign this jig because in order for it to work, it has to be able to be realigned. And then I could just cut it out with my jigsaw. I would clean up these edges edges as well. On the, with this little portable belt sander, disc sander I got, which has kind of been invaluable and then I have these poplar sticks. I have center marks on them, and I'm aligning them over the, my original marks. I have a piece of wood, which is gonna be about the same thickness as what I bend in there. So this is separated to about as far as it's gonna to have to go. So I could put those on there, I squared them up, and I let that glue set up. So for this, I'm gonna be doing things a little bit differently. I'm actually making a drying form, and that is because I, since this material is gonna be th so thin, I should be able to bend all of these pieces in one day. So I won't have to bend one piece way overnight. It will just go a lot faster. So I transferred that pattern to a piece of half inch ply, and I cut it out, and then since my pattern's not perfect, I then put the other one on top of the other and, and cut them out so they're the same shape. I screwed another half inch piece of ply to um, hold up these two arms and then I just put a bunch of poplar strips going down the center. I spaced these about six inches apart, it's actually a little bit less. So now this drying form will mimic the shape of, that I'm bending so I could transfer this all my pieces to this drying form and the air will be able to circulate fully around them and then I could clean up, uh, clear up my jig and bend multiple pieces at once. So if you're going to be making something that has multiple pieces, it's worth it to spend the time to make this drying jig. So now that my centers were lined up, I could then go put two pieces of wood on either side, and then this can realign itself each time I bend. This wasn't um, 
completely foolproof this design I had, but like I said, I really only needed to get through four, four bends. Then with my template, I measured it with a, a flexible tape measure so I could get an approximate length. I had to bend in the steam bender and I overcut these so they're a little bit long. Now for this bend, I was running out of pieces that had the, the grain runout I was looking for, so I actually decided to bend these and then glue them together like laminations. So to get my three quarters, I actually ended up cutting th uh, three eighths inch strips of oak by three quarters inch strips of oak and bent two of them at a time and that would be one piece. For my metal strap, I just used some flashing pieces uh, clamped together. There's four on each side. And then you could see my method was kind of to put that wood in there, flank both edges with the metal, and then use these pipe clamps to, to clamp everything together. I use these pipe clamps because the, the clamping action on them, since it's a screw with a handle, is much faster than C clamps or any other sort of clamps I have. And then I could gradually just apply pressure to all three of them. I perfected this method a little bit after this is my first bend and then I could slowly get that wood to take shape in my form. So these ended up turning out really great. I had one little hairline crack on this first bend, but the other ones turned out fine. You could see my jig is lifting off the table a little bit. That ended up not really mattering. And you could see that my alignment blocks kind of skewed on all of them. And I'm wondering if that is just because I never cut out the actual shape. I just cut the piece in half. But like I said, it all ended up working out. So I just uh, bent the first one and then did all the other ones exactly the same way. I let it set up in the jig for about an hour and then transferred all my pieces to the drying form. Put clamps on them and I did this four times because these will go on the legs so I need four of them. So that is how that sets in the, in the drying jig and I kept these in the jig for a week because now that they're laminated they have to be glued together and they'll have to be pretty dry in order to glue them. So this is just taking out pieces and swapping pieces. This is the nice part of having the drying jig. You can just be continuously bending. I could take out the pieces that were in the steamer, um, replace them with new ones and keep going all day long. So on the new method I did the center first. I clamped that. Then I put the edges in place and clamp those so I could loosen the center and reclamp it and continue. And that was a much easier process. If you have longer clamps, you could do it in one go, but I was running out of, out of uh, width on these. So this was the second one. I end up doing four, I don't film all four. And before I let everything set up, I make sure that I hammer down this piece so that it's flat on the, on the table. If you have twists in your bent pieces, it, it's really a pain to work with afterwards. Arguably not workable at all. So you can see when I take those out, there is a little bit of spring back and then I transfer it to, to the drying jig. So that was the third, actually I filmed the second one, but I showed transferring the third one and then obviously there will be a fourth. It would be smart to bend um, extras of all these pieces, but I just didn't really have the time. So then to finish up the top of the chair, I'm adding two extra rails on the edge that will connect to the seat. And these are kind of gonna be the stabilizer rails because they'll also connect to the top of the chair edge. So to match the, the rails I already have, I chamfered the edges on some pieces of oak. Now any oak that I'm not steam bending has to be dry, so I can't use the same material that I used for all the steam bent pieces. So you actually, I needed kind of two sources of oak for this, dried oak and the, the air dried oak that I used for all the steam bending. On the chair top, I put a sacrificial fence and my table saw and I cut two dados the same width as the oak pieces I just cut, which um, was a little over an inch. So I'll have a nice flat joint on the back to attach those, those edge rails to. You can see what that looks like. So this is just test feeding those pieces in place. I overcut them. I made a mark. So I'm also going to cut a dado in the rail so that I have a nice lap joint on the back side of this chair to attach everything to. So when I had them propped up, I was just making a mark of, 
of the chair back, which is at this point a slight angle. It's not a straight 90 degree off that one edge, which is why I marked it. So I could go through on my table saw and trim up to that chamfer and then finish up the cut um, on my on my workbench just using a hand saw because the the table saw won't get you a square cut so you can't cut all the way through to your mark and then you can kind of see how those are going to fit in place on the back side of that chair so obviously since they're going a little bit further back there's a gap and then they won't meet at the seat so what I did was I had them clamped in place and I made some marks because once again these marks aren't going to be a perfect 90. Once I had that I used some key stock and the, the gap was about a quarter of an inch so I had to take about a quarter of an inch off the bottom so I used another piece of key stock as a flat edge and then the quarter inch piece to mark about where I, I needed to take the material off. So this is the finished one. You could see that that material I end up removing is at a taper because I'm going around a circle. So this is the finished product in place. You can see how now everything fits flat there and flat on the chair. And then this is how I did that. So I had that original mark and I transferred it to the other side, but the mark on the other side isn't as deep because you won't have to take as much off the other side because it's a circle. So you can see I started by cutting it with a, uh, a saw and I cut close to my line and then I took a little plane and cleaned it up. So then from this point you could see that I have that, that tapered, it's a very weird um, very weird shape that you have to cut on the bottom. So I rough cut it like this. I would test it on the chair, see where it was hitting, and remove a little bit at a time until I got a nice perfect fit on the bottom. This seems really tedious, and the first one honestly was, but after I knew the method, the second one I did in about 10 minutes. And then I could clean that up on my sander and get a nice, a nice joint at the bottom as well as the top. And that is the second one in place. So then once I had those in place, because it was easiest to do that without the top on, uh, the top glued in place, I went through and glued the center rails all together. So then those four center rails would be glued to the, the backrest and then as well glued to the seat. This was pretty easy because everything fit nicely. I just put glue in all of, all of the holes and then I could kind of hammer it down. You could see it's a nice a nice fit. And then um, to, to sure it up, I could just add some clamps. I didn't ratchet on these clamps a ton because I didn't want to snap my rails, but I, that's how I held it in place while everything was able to dry. So then I started finishing up the legs because before I added all of the other attachments, I wanted the legs to be um, smoothed out and, and uh, clamped in place so I wouldn't have to go back and do it when there's stuff in the way. So I just used a thick washer to add some curves to the top and the bottom and that's all I'm really going to do for decoration for this. Um, when I sand it, I'll kind of chamfer the edges, but in general, there's not a lot of detailing on the on the oak parts in the in the in the photo, so I didn't add them to the chair. Then I could just clean that up once again on the sander, so that those curves are nice and square and flat. And it's funny how just adding a simple curve to the edge of something makes it look so much more finished than when it was just flat. So once I had those done. I could finally um, make the attachment for the top. You can see I have the screw jack in place and I'm making some marks for where those wings overhang. Before this, I didn't get it on camera, but I had drilled a two and a half inch hole in the center that goes about three quarters of an inch down with a hole saw. So you could see that's what that circular um, recess is in the center. So now I have to remove all of that material. So I started by using um, the handsaw. I could cut some curves through the center, cut off those little dovetail wings I have, and then after I cut those, I cut a bunch of curves down the center 
and used um, uh, a mixture of chisels, hammers, and eventually a Dremel to kind of remove all this material. So this base is super strong, but going into end grain like this, especially oak end grain, is just difficult. It's not going to chip off nicely, and honestly, all of my chisels need to be sharpened. So it was a little bit of a slow process. You could see I kind of made a bunch of curves, used the saw to remove some material, and then um, I ended up taking out the Dremel, and that's what really, really ended up finishing everything up, because I also have to remove that circular part on the wings as well. So then after I had that recess, I could finally glue these legs together, and this was nice because um, once you start gluing stuff together, everything's just so much more stable. Even though these dovetails were nice tight fits, everything will wobble around on you still a little bit until it's glued. So this was very simple. I just had um, added a bunch of glue to, the, to both parts of the dovetail, and because there's not as the glue acts so nicely to reduce friction, it's um, went together very nicely. Could slide those pieces in place. I'm super sloppy with glue, so it went all over the place. And then I simply just added a couple clamps, which everything was in place, and let this set up. Um, you know, obviously making sure that it was it was square, one leg wasn't longer than the other, but I had test fit this so many times that it was already pretty good. So once it came out of the clamps, even though I've spent a lot of time making this, there were still some undulations in the legs, especially because there was the long ones and the short ones. So all I did was add some spacers under the feet so that it wouldn't wobble anymore. That's what all those things sticking out under the feet are. Um, those are the two little gaps I'm going to have to fill. Once I had the, the spacer under the feet, I could go through with the same size block and make marks on all of the feet. Now these were going to be cut anyway because I didn't want the, the chair sitting on its tippy toes, but the best way to cut it is to also level it at the same time. So you could see that this one leg that has a little twist in it, the line was uneven. So I transferred the mark on the side to the front and then the other side. And then once I had marks on both those sides, I could go through and just saw it off. So you're gonna be sawing off a section that looks uneven, but once it comes off, the chair itself will be flat. So you can see I followed those marks on all of my sides. I cleaned it up quickly with a, a little hand plane. And then when I put it flat on the table now, it doesn't rock at all. And then I could also put the leveling jack in place, and now it sits uh, more flush than before in the, in the top section. So then I could also glue up the rest of the chair, so you could see how that is sitting in place there. And the way I did this was very simple. I chamfered that edge before I glued everything together. It will just look nicer than having a square edge on the back put a bunch of glue in that rabbit cut on the edge of the chair, put a bunch of glue on the cut um, for the chair rail that's going on the back, and then um, I clamp this in place. Now I'm eventually going to put some dowels through this, but um, I always will let everything set up and then add the dowels. It, I just find it makes life a lot easier. So you can see I'm adding a bunch of C-clamps, and then also this will get a dowel, but it's harder to get a clamp on this section, so I just put a screw in the back while the glue sets up, and then I'll remove that screw and replace it with a dowel. So this is the end of this video. There's only going to be, I believe, one more part where I kind of wrap everything up. Um, I still have the old photos at the end of this video because I just didn't have time to take new ones because this was all done around Christmas time and I was just wrapping up a ton of other projects.